through all of these, uh, all of this stuff, and not just this, but preparing for the New Year sermon. I start, I start right from Thanksgiving, and so you know, I, what do, what do I preach? Um, what do I, and what do I speak? And there's, there's no topic more than life experiences, right? And um, when uh, nowadays we hear a testimony, there are so many people who you know will not even shake when they hear a testimony, right? But when it happens in their lives. In, in the small situations of their lives. What it is to be a Seventh-day Adventist, right? What it is to be a Christian. Um, the, the, the verses that were read by a brother just before I stood up. First Thessalonians. Do you have your Bibles? Um, you know, let's do it the old style way. Right? If you have your Bibles on, um, your physical Bibles or, app, uh, or, or, the, or the apps, you know, or, or on your phones or anything. Let's open it to First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 18. It's, it's a wonderful promise that, that, that Paul writes to the church of Thessalonica. Uh, it's, it says here, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, who, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. How many of you love driving? Driving your car. I love driving in any form. Physically, virtually, you know. Uh, in any form. And just to even see some, someone driving. Sometimes I just watch videos of people driving, you know, and it's, it's not something weird, but uh, people driving the car, on, especially when, when they're fast, you know. Uh, I, I have a backseat, dri a backseat driver in my car all the time, you know, and that's, that, that's my wonderful wife. And uh, it, it, it's like, she, she says, I should have the brakes sometimes in my feet, why don't I have that? And because she always sees me speeding 10, 15 miles over the speed, speed limit. Uh, which is not very exemplary of a pastor, but you know, uh, now I've started to uh, control myself because there are two kids in the car. And uh, but I love driving, and especially um, we all, uh, we all, you know, who, who, are, who are drivers who drive cross country. You know, we, we all love this game where we have this game with the GPS, right? The GPS tells us at a particular time that we'll reach, and we want to race that time. I'm not that kind of person. Okay, I like to stop at every pit stop. You know, I like to stop at rest areas. I like to see the fridge magnets and what you know different stuff they have. My wife doesn't like that at all. She she's like, why don't you just try? You know, why do you have to stop at every? No, I said, honey, you know, I have to stay awake. I have to be stimulated and stay awake, and you know, I have to. Uh, so, and and she said, okay. So this last uh, fall, we were driving to Florida. Um, I don't know if you've been Florida resident ever, uh, but we, we were driving to Florida, and uh, we got on the Florida Turnpike. And uh, you, those who uh, those who drive to Florida, they know that when you get on the Turnpike, there are it's straight. There are no exits. Okay, for 20 miles, 30 miles, there are no exits. So I got on the Florida Turnpike and I got a call from one of the members of um, one of my churches. And we started talking. And my wife had given up this time and she started napping a little bit. You know, while, while I was driving. She never does that. It's very rare of her because her eyes are wide open when I'm driving. So, but she took a nap and uh, I didn't pay attention, but the gas light was on. <laughs> and you know what I mean. When, when I said the gas, gas light was on. We are on Florida Turnpike and the gas light comes on. There's very little gas left and there were at least um, 80 to 100 miles to cross more. And the gas light was on and I did not realize I was talking and talking. Once I start my phone call, it's, it's at least 45 minutes with anybody. So um, we, were, we were talking and he was expressing his concern. And suddenly my eye goes on the gas light. And I stop listening to him. <laughs> you know, he's still talking, but I stop. I said, oh my goodness, the gas light is on. What do I do? And um, uh, 
you know, sometimes they're scared of your wife also. So I said, my wife should not wake up and see that. <laughs> that the gas light is on. <laughs> so I, I'm driving, I'm driving and I'm, and I'm praying, Lord, I please let not the you know, gas get old. And we drive 10 miles, 20 miles. My wife saw that, but she did not comment or anything. She knew that I was scared already. So, <laughs> and the, the, the kids were sleeping in the, in the back. And I said, Lord, I love you and you love me. We know that. And, and, and you know, I've accepted you. All the Christianity comes alive, right? When the, the gas light is on. So it, it was on and I said, Lord, please let not this finish. 20 miles go by, 25 miles go by. And the gas light is flashing now. Okay, it's flashing. And uh, my wife is like, so take it to the nearest exit. I said, yeah, I don't see an exit. I said, I'm driving and driving. I don't see an exit. And we took one exit after that. That was about after another 20 miles. I took another exit. And we drive by, but this, there's this whole Harley Davidson fair going on. And the, the motorcycles are there. And I said, there, there should be definitely a gas station here. But there was no gas station. We had to pull out once again and get on the highway, get on the turnpike. But after like 20 miles again, we saw an exit, a service area. And I was like, praise God. You know? Praise God that there is a service area. And I pulled over the service area. The first thing I do, every time the first thing I do is I go into the, uh, you know, the coffee shop or, or, or the restaurant and I find something to eat. But here, the first thing I did, uh, did was, there was a car waiting. There, there was a car already filling gas and I was waiting behind him. I said, I'm not getting up before filling gas. I was so concerned that that gas light should be off. We filled the gas and we were all relieved. You know, we all are on a journey, right? We all are on a spiritual journey. Daddy. Our gas light is also on. We all are on a spiritual journey and our gas light is on. We live in a world that is unraveling by the minute. We live in a world that has gone seriously wrong. We are losing our children and our young people by the minute. We have ill-tempered, bad-mannered, gun-toting R&D rappers who are celebrated, emulated, and considered role models while teachers, preachers, doctors, lawyers are labeled as geeks, nerds, and boring people to the common age. Children are dying before they have a chance to live. Some children know how to fire a gun before they even know how to talk or walk. To be a Christian is no longer popular. To go to church is no longer the norm. To study the Bible is no more a commonplace. Atheism is on the rise. Morality has gone out of the window. And sin is an outdated concept. Depression is real. Cancer is rampant. Divorce is spreading. Unemployment is common. Pay is low. Friends don't understand. Family doesn't understand. Who are we kidding? Our gas light is not just on, but our gas light is flash. But my dear Christian brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, we are going to make it. Amen. 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 That's the title of my sermon. In the name of Jesus, we are going to make it. Jesus is coming again. The climax, climax of human history is approaching. Jesus is coming to get us and we are going to make it. Amen? Amen. Now I know that people have been preaching about the second coming for about 2,000 years. But don't let that keep you from believing that it's true. Because you know what? Time means nothing to God. God is timeless. What does the Bible say? 1,000 years to us is but... One day to God. God has promised in His Word that He is coming back. And due to that, you may have passed 2019. I will not give you any false um, witness of, oh, 2020 is your year. Just like somebody did and tell, told you that 2019 is your year. I saw this uh, funny meme on, on Facebook, you know, where kids are standing with rocks. And looking on the other side of the street, I'm still looking for the person who told me 2019 is my year. You know? I'm not going to give you that false hope. 
But I will give you a real hope that Apostle Paul gives through the church of Thessalonica. That, what does it say in verse 16? For the Lord himself shall descend. The Lord is so interested in the life of you and me that he himself, not angel Gabriel, nobody else is going to do the job, but the Lord himself will descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. <coughs> no fact is established more in scripture than the second coming of Christ. Prophets prophesied in the Old Testament. Jesus proclaimed it in the New Testament. Angels publicized it in the book of Acts. The church preached in the epistles. Jesus himself pronounced it in Revelation chapter 22, 7, 12, and 20. Behold, I come quickly. In the Old Testament, there are 1,845 verses to Christ's seventh, second coming. In the New Testament, 13 of the 27 books speak explicitly about His coming, and the other 14 speak implicitly about His coming. Christmas season has just gone by, and we witness every time the Christmas story of what, of how Jesus came, or the, the of, of how He had, had arrived in His first coming. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, he came the first time with the star in the east, but the second time his coming is a bright and morning star. He came the first time as a helpless baby, but he's coming the second time as a glorious king. Amen. He came the first time riding on a donkey, but he's coming the second time riding on a white horse. He came the first time born into the world, but he's coming the second time to redeem the world. He came the first time as God becoming man, but he's coming the second time as God rescuing man. He came the first time to die for his people, but he's coming the second time to rescue his people. When he came the first time, only a few people saw him, but when he'll come the second time, every eye will see him. He departed from the Mount of Olives in Acts chapter 1. But it's also at the Mount of Olives where he'll return the second time, according to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. For the Lord himself shall descend with the voice of an archangel. Now you see, we, we, we read this text and as Adventists we know, uh, probably when um, Brother Peter, he, when he told 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 18, we knew what this means, right? What this verse said. I call it the loudest verse in, in the Bible. It, it, uh, it denies every rapture theory. Right? Uh, and and it, it, it rings loud for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We, we, we have studied in Bible studies. We have done so many research on that. But uh, let me tell you, why did Paul tell this to the church of Thessalonica? You know, if, if you see in 1 Thessalonians, every chapter has the mention of Christ's second coming. In, in 1 Thessalonians. That's what Paul does. You see, in his time, what, what happened is when he explained this doctrine of Christ's second coming, there was a lot of confusion in the church of Thessalonica on the understanding of the, uh, of the doctrine. Because when, he, when the last of the saints started dying in the church, okay, when the last of the saints started dying in the church, people started wondering whether they'll see Jesus, whether the dead ones will see Jesus when he comes. And that's why Paul mentions the hope here that the dead in Christ will rise first. That's why in verse 18 he says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. And so it was this hope that kept the church of Thessalonica alive while their gaslight was flashing. That was the hope that kept them alive because one after the other, they were dying. The church was dying. In our families, our churches are dying. Individually, our churches are dying. This is a fact. We may do everything, but we have to realize that people are no more interested to see or look for hope in Christianity. 
And so we need to buckle up. We need to see practical Christianity through the eyes of Jesus. Where have we gone wrong? What have we done? Have we recharged ourselves enough so that the gas light would not come on? What is the reason that the gas light in the Seventh-day Adventist Church has come on? What did we do wrong? Where did we, where we go wrong? Somewhere along the line, we are responsible for the gas light being flashed. And so it is time for all of us to wake up. Amen. It is time for all of us to realize that the Lord himself will change the church. Amen. That the Lord himself will bring about a revival. All we need to come is come together in an intercession that will create an aroma of prayer to the throne of grace in heaven. Amen. We need to realize that we cannot do anything for the engine. It, we, all we can do is pull up to the station. Most of us have forgotten that we need to pull up. That our gas light is flashing. Most of us, we are so stubborn that we will wait for our car to get stuck on the highway. But we will not pull up to the station. Brothers and sisters, we cannot do anything, nothing at all, to bring anybody into the church. But what we can do is show God a burden in our hearts. Do you and I, I have a burden in our heart? Because it's the same human beings they were that, that were there in the 50s and 60s. And maybe the struggles have you know, changed. Maybe the challenges have changed. But it's the same human heart that is longing for hope. I was looking at one of Billy Graham's uh, sermons, you know, the other day, and they, the, the camera showed a shot of people sitting in the audience. And I was realizing, these are not any different from now. These are the same people. But what happened that Billy Graham could show so much faith and hope in those people. Because he realized that the gas light is on. That the hippie revolution and this revolution and that revolution has influenced people so much. And the church has separated itself so much from the people and got into traditions that Jesus is being seen nowhere yes. in the picture. Yeah. In our families, we need to start how many of you have fireplaces in your house? There should be a fireplace of prayer in your house. Just like our family fireplaces have gone dry and we don't use it anymore. And it is just there to beautify our home. Such has become our life also. We don't feel the heat, the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to reunite, re revive those fireplaces of prayer in our house. God does not want you to have a PhD degree in theology to come closer to Him. No, He wants a heart. Sister White writing, writes in her writings, and you might know this very, very, very popular verse. A feeble man's prayer shakes the whole host of Satan's kingdom. A feeble man's fervent prayer will shake the whole kingdom of Satan. Now mind you, this woman saw Satan. If you go in the right. This woman saw the face of Satan. She writes. And she says, it is nothing of victory. The face of God is the face of victory. Amen. And you might think that media is overpowering my life. And this is overpowering my life. And that is overpowering my life. No! You yourself are letting everything overpower yourself. And so what happens? 
hymns become dry in our lives. Relationships mean nothing in our life. You know why? Because we forgot to pull up. And our eyes are only on the gas light flashing, but not on the exit which can show us the station. And that's why Paul tells to the church of Thessalonica, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Just imagine the happiness of the church of Thessalonica when they realize that their dead ones will see Christ Amen. if they were if they die believing. Amen. Even if you die believing, you will see Christ. Amen. But you have to die believing. Your life should be one of belief. Because it's the same hope that will keep us that will keep this world which is on fire. It is the same hope when our bodies are rocking with pain, when you're sick and can't get up, when your expenses are more than your income, when your boss is driving you crazy, when you feel like quitting, when you're looking for a job, when your loved ones don't understand, when life is off track, we have this hope that burns within our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. That is the bigger picture here. What country island you live in, what amenities we enjoy, let not that decide of what is going to be in heaven. Amen. We are going to make it. We are going to make it. Amen. Whatever is our situation right now, the Lord promises that we are going to make it. The world is towards its doom. The world is committing suicide. And nothing can save it. Trump can do it. Vladimir Putin can do it. Kim Jong Un can do it. You can do it. I cannot do it. Only God can do it. Because for the Lord Himself will descend. <coughs> there are people I have never seen in my life request me to read these verses when they're dying. There are people who have never been to a church who request me to read these verses. What is there in these verses? Because they were looking for hope. They denied it, but the end of their life, when they see the fact of life, that they cannot with all the power in the world, with all the degrees and with all the money in the world, they cannot save themselves. They are then ready to submit their life to God. Yes. Let's not wait till that time. Let's proclaim this message to others that God loves them. That the reality of life is Jesus. Which means that a year can pass by, a decade can pass by, a century or a millennial can pass by, millennium can pass by, but our hope in the Lord should never die. Amen? Amen. Time shouldn't affect the fact that Jesus is coming. Our life situation shouldn't affect the fact that Jesus is coming. Our health shouldn't be the fact, should affect the fact that Jesus is coming. It may be 1884, it may be 1901, it may be 1970, 1985, 2005, 2019, or 2020. Jesus is coming back again. Amen. We should enter the new year with this glorious proclamation of Jesus' second coming. Let's never forget that we are Seventh-day Adventists. A seventh day because I... Keep the Sabbath because I glorify God in the Sabbath. Amen. And I proclaim when I sit in the church on Sabbath or when I rest from my work from Sabbath that God alone is my master. Amen. And that the people will not control me, but God alone will control me. And Adventist, because though the poster in my house of Jesus is coming again has become sh shady and it has torn and it has become dirty, but the hope in my heart is alive and living, that Jesus is coming back. Because according to the Bible, God cannot lie. 
God cannot lie. If He has said He's coming, He's coming. All that is happening in the world right now. Tell me, have you read it or not in the Bible? Absolutely. Have you read it or not in the Bible? Wars, rumors of wars, earthquake, pestilences. Right? Nation going against nation. World polarization. Tell me one country which is at rest politically. Everywhere there is political unrest. World Economic Forum has uh, said that most of the countries are under political unrest. For me right now, to, to go to India would be like committing a suicide because of the political and religious unrest that is going on. The, the, the political uh, parties of India are trying to make India a Hindu state completely. Getting rid of ethnic cleansing, what they call getting rid of all other religions, all other minorities. And so it is happening in many other countries. Christianity has become an emblem. Just the cross has become an emblem. Let not be that emblem just like that. Let us realize why we are who we are. Let this hope that the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. Let this hope be alive in your heart. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Let us comfort each other with these words. And so I would request you to just repeat after me one phrase. If you believe in this message, in the Adventist message of Jesus is coming, let us repeat together. We are going to make it. We are going to make it. One more time. We are going to make it. We are going to make it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let your year. We start this year. I would have given you any other verse. But the Advent message should always be alive in our hearts. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. As we close the service, let us uh, sing hymn number 214. We have this hope. Hymn number 214. <coughs> let us just sing the first verse of the song.
Help us, Lord, to be hopeful, to know